Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike, and today we'll be going over running Docker containers inside of LXC containers in Proxmox. Although this is a bit unorthodox, in my experience it tends to run surprisingly well, and it helps to achieve a few things that simply running Docker in a VM won't get you. First off, it makes it much easier to see and to manage services you're running right from the data center view here in your Proxmox install. I'm very into the single pane of glass mindset, and I often like to extend that to even the number of windows and interfaces that I have open, so this helps me to more easily visualize what's going on on my servers. Second, since LXC containers share the kernel from Proxmox, it can save on space and overhead as opposed to installing a VM with Docker. Another advantage is that, in my opinion, it makes managing the devices on your network a bit easier, since the network configuration can be done right in the Proxmox GUI. And since each LXC container shares the kernel with Proxmox, you can effectively pass through PCI devices, such as a GPU, to multiple containers as needed, which is a bit more difficult to do with VMs. And lastly, one of the biggest reasons I chose to do this in my environment is that it allows for more effective granularization of backups within Proxmox. Since some containers tend to be more important than others, I like to keep more frequent and extensive backup schedules for the more important ones. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll want to do once we're logged into our Proxmox web GUI is grab an LXC template for our LXC containers. So go ahead and go down to the storage that you would like to grab the template and store it on. Go to Container Templates here, go up to the top left and click Templates. Now there are a lot of options here, and you can use whichever flavor of Linux you prefer. Keep in mind that some will work better than others for this. For instance, I've had good luck with Debian, Ubuntu, and Arch. However, for some reason, I had issues with Alpine and CentOS for this. For the time being, I'll just go ahead and use Debian 10. So I'll select it, and then I'll click Download. This usually takes a minute or two to download. I already had the template downloaded on this machine, so it gave me a message stating that the file already exists. Once your template is downloaded and ready to go, you can go ahead and close out of here. And then in the top right, we will click Create Container. So first, you'll go ahead and make sure you're installing on the correct node. And I like to start my containers at 300, so I'll go ahead and call this one 300. You'll enter a host name. This is going to be sort of our golden container, so I'll call it docker-golden. It's usually a good security practice to leave the unprivileged container option checked, as it makes it harder for a container to infect the host if it's compromised. The risk here is slightly mitigated by the fact that the actual services themselves will be inside of another container in Docker, but it's good to keep in mind. That being said, if you're mounting network shares to a container, it's much easier to manage with a privileged container. There are methods to mount network shares to an unprivileged container, but there's a bit of a workaround involved. I like to take the simple approach and use a privileged container, being aware of the slight security risk that that does present. So I'll go ahead and uncheck that, and then we'll give ourselves a password here. And you have the option of using an SSH public key if you like. I won't for now. Go ahead and click Next. Here we'll find the template that we just downloaded by selecting the storage we downloaded it to. For me it was local. And then the template will be Debian 10. And then hit Next. I'll leave the storage as my VM storage and the disk size at 8. This can be adjusted later if you would like. Hit Next. And for now I'd like to give this two cores. This can be adjusted up or down depending on the needs of the services you're running. So next. And for memory, I'll go ahead and give it two gigabytes. Again, this can be adjusted up or down based on the system requirements. Hit next. Make sure you're using the proper interface and bridge. Since I'm running an internal network through PFSense, I'll need to change my bridge to VMBR1. In most cases, you won't need to change either of these options depending on how you have the network set up on your machine. And since this is going to be the golden image, I like to give it a dynamic IP address to prevent duplicates during the cloning process. And I'll leave IPv6 alone. And then hit next. I'll keep the host settings as the DNS. Next. Here you'll give everything another once over just to make sure it looks right. And make sure that start after created is unchecked so that it doesn't boot when the container is created. Hit finish. It'll take a few moments to create the container. 
All right, the container is created. So let's close out of here. And then we'll go over to our docker dash colon container. Before we boot our container, there are a couple of settings I would like to change. So under your container, go to options. And then double click on features here. And we're going to select nesting. And depending on whether you use NFS or CIFS, you'll select those. I use CIFS and most of my network shares. So I'll only check CIFS here. And then we'll hit OK. So now we can go up to console and then start our container. All right, so now we'll go ahead and log in as root. And with the password we entered before. And as usual, any commands that I use in this tutorial can be found in the description below. So the first thing we're going to do is an apt update. And then an apt upgrade. And now we'll need to install a few packages. I'm going to be copying and pasting some commands from a document off screen. You can follow along by copying and pasting from the description of the video. So we're going to paste in this. And this will just install apt transport HTTPS, CA certificates, curl, GNUPG2, and software properties common. Hit yes on the prompts. And then we'll add the docker gpg key with this command here. And now we'll use this command to add the docker repository. And we'll do another quick apt update. Go ahead and clear out our space here. And now we will install the docker package with apt install docker dash ce. Yes on the prompt. This may take a couple of minutes. We'll let it finish up. And once that's done, we can check whether docker is running by typing systemctl status docker. And we can see that it is active and running. Exit out of here with control C. And here's where you'll install any additional packages that you would like to have on your golden image to be cloned to other containers. I'm going to install CIF utils and Docker Compose just so that I have them on any container cloned from this one. And finally, we'll test that Docker is functioning properly by typing Docker run hello dash world. And if you get this message, your Docker install is ready to go. And you can use this container just like you would any other Docker install. Or you can clone it and make each LXC container have just one Docker container within it. Alright, that's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.